Hi everybody, April Brooker here. I'm a master ventriloquist. You may have seen me on Rachel Ray, Talk Soup, My Strange Addiction, What Would You Do, Telemundo, Dutch National Television, BBC and MTV Europe performing ventriloquism. And I've also performed in different venues around New York City, Los Angeles, as well as the Las Vegas Strip. Here I am on behalf of clownantics.com teaching you some of the basics of ventriloquism and how to go through the pitfalls of ventriloquism. Well, as a ventriloquist, there are gonna be different performance scenarios that you encounter. What I'm trying to say is that this is an art form that's a little different than others because people can see you and they can see the puppet. There's no curtain, there's no suspension. It's you and the puppet. They can see you work. You are writer, you are director, you are comedian, you are voice, and you are puppet master. You gotta be good at all of it. No ifs, ands, or buts. But now that being said, when you put that puppet on the arm, that puppet is real to you. I mean, when you put it in the suitcase, it shouldn't be real to you because that's just like schizoid. But when that puppet's on your arm, it's real to you. You gotta be invested in that puppet and you gotta give that puppet life. You are that puppet's mother, father, friend, and God. So what I'm trying to say is that the better you are at your job though, because if you're good at your job, other people will think that puppet's real. And most of the time, this is gonna be met with laughs, this is gonna be met with interactions, this is gonna be met with people telling you afterwards, you know, I really like you, but you were so good with that puppet that I wanted to punch it. As a matter of fact, several years ago, I was doing a showcase and a booker came up and he said, you know, I just wanted to punch that May, that May Wilson, every time she insulted you. And it actually, part of it broke my heart because, you know, I love me. But then the other was like, gosh, this is becoming a good little act I got. At least I think so. You might not. But anyway, there are going to be times that other people think your puppet's real and it might not be so good. For instance, there will be times that you're strolling entertainment and strolling entertainment, if you're brand new, means you walk around, you tell jokes, you do magic, whatever and you got the puppet on your arm. Now, there will be people that will grab your puppet, okay, they will grab you and your puppet, but they will start to pour their hearts out to your puppet. And what I mean is, they will talk about anything from their loneliness, how they're not getting any action in the dating department, to their recent divorce, to their recent firing, to how they hate their lives, and you know, some of it's the alcohol at these events, but some of it is these people really need somebody to talk to and they haven't quite picked you, they've picked your puppet. That being said, you gotta have a catchy line to get away because you know, the less you engage somebody that's detached from reality, the better, but also you got a job to do. And I mean, you're just pretending to be detached from reality. You know the puppet's fake. These people, I'm not so sure. Besides, they might have insurance that doesn't cover therapy. I don't know. Next thing that might happen is you might be entertaining for children. Now there are two kinds of little children. The first kind are the type that are like, I know that puppet's not real. Your lips are moving. You're making it talk. And they kind of sound like Cartman from South Park. I'm just kidding. But my point is, is that those kids are the ones that know it's fake. And you can explain to them, yes, I am a ventriloquism person. Would you like to learn how to do it? And what you do is you teach them how to do it on the spot. They become the most obnoxious little practitioners of ventriloquism there are. And you know, they're the ones that are like, I'm a ventriloquist, I'm a ventriloquist, I'm a ventriloquist. And they're saying to their hand, stop talking. I'm a ventriloquist, I'm a ventriloquist, stop talking. And you've created a little monster. That's how you win that one. But the second group of little children, they're not quite old enough to know what's up. And they think your puppet's real. And they're scared and they cry. And nobody likes a crying child, it's just awkward. No parent likes a crying child. So what you could do is have the puppet come up to them, start talking, 
and make it very friendly and very nice. Compliment the child. And then, if all goes well, have the child give the puppet a hug. And if it even works out, take the puppet off your hand and show the kid the puppet isn't real. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's not really talking to them. Finally, the last group that's a little interesting are some of the dementia patients in nursing homes. And this is actually kind of sad. I did a lot of nursing homes as a teenager because where I grew up, we just had them and that's what you do when you're a teenager. And there would be people in the nursing home, again, with severe dementia, who were put there by their children. And sometimes the people we're related to are not so nice. And sometimes the people that we create and give birth to are not so nice. And so their children would put them in the home and they would come up to my puppet and go, get me out of here, get me out of here. And in those cases, you just keep the show rolling. I wanna go with you, my children stuck me here. Take me with you. They might even grab your puppet's clothes from time to time. But what you do is you just keep the show rolling. You keep going. You say, we can leave when we're done. The staff is not gonna let you take them, okay? The staff has to account for them. And sometimes, unfortunately too, this is the only place that can handle somebody with dementia. And lastly, let's talk about street performing. You might wanna be a street performer. Be aware that most people will like your street performing. You're gonna get some snarky people, but every once in a while, you might get attacked. When I was 24, I was doing a bunch of shows in Brooklyn and a guy came up to me and my puppet Mae Wilson and he didn't like some of the jokes she was telling and he attempted to strangle her. He attempted to tear her off my hand and strangle her. And that's when I took a run for it. And Mae, would you like to tell them about the harrowing tale? Yes, I would. So how did it go down exactly? Well, you see, I was minding my own business, doing a show on the side of the road doing my hair and I said, hey handsome, how much money do you have? And what did he say? He said, well, bleep you cockit, I'm completely broke. You're a shallow bleep. Oh yeah, that's right. He wasn't very happy with you. He said, how dare you talk to me? Bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah, we, we can't say those words um, because this is a family friendly site. And so what happened next? Before I knew it, he was trying to strangle me and it was so terrifying. Yeah, that's right. We had to run for it. Yes, we did. We had to run for it. And he had his hands around my neck. I was like, no! I know, seriously, there, there was some puppet carnage there. No! And, and what happened next? I was so upset that I almost retired her egger. What's a show queen to do? That is a good question, May. What is a show queen to do? But then I dusted myself off. I thought, this will be a great story. And I got myself a new leave because he ruined the old one. Yeah, that's right. He did ruin your hair. Yeah, that's what I was most upset about. He ruined my hair, okay? He was totally broke and he ruined my hair. Somebody that's broke shouldn't be allowed to ruin your hair. But the most important thing, May, was we got out alive. You got out alive. I'm not real. That totally wasn't a problem for me. You see, if you would have died, I would have just found a cockat master that made more money. So guys, there you have it. Different types of audiences, different types of problems, and ways to handle them. Well, everybody, now you know how to navigate some of the difficult situations that you and only you as a ventriloquist will run into. Tune in for more videos on clownantics.com.